Hey, Merry Christmas and welcome to Prairie Lakes Church Online. I'm Cody, uh, I'm one of the pastors here and right off the bat, uh, we need you to know this about us. We're a no matter church. And what that means is no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or even what's been done to you, we need you to know um, God loves you and you can look for him here with us. You don't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to clean yourself up to be here. We're just really glad that you're here. And maybe uh, you're in a spot today where you're brand new. Uh, maybe you're here because a friend asked you to uh, or a family member and you begrudgingly said yes uh, just to get them to shut up about it, right? Uh, or maybe um, you've been here for a while, uh, maybe weeks or months, and you haven't taken that step to become known. You're still attending here um, anonymously. And if, if that's you, either one of those, uh, I'd encourage you to take the step to become known today. Uh, because when you become known, uh, you can build community and relationships, you can get connected and grow together. We're not designed to do this life alone. So if you take that step uh, to get connected, I'm gonna send you an Amazon gift card as a thank you. And it takes about 30 seconds to take that step by filling out our welcome card. And you can get to that by texting NEW to 99581. And if you're an insider uh, with us today, a next step that we talk about every week is giving generously. So if you wanna partner with us on our mission, if you wanna invest in our mission here at Prairie Lakes Church to cover the state of Iowa with no matter churches, uh, you can do that uh, right now by giving online at prairielakes.org forward slash give. But we are going to continue uh, in our Christmas Eve service here today. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Up next, we're gonna watch uh, an animation of the Christmas story. So let's watch that together. Dear friend, several biographies of Christ have already been written. However, it occurred to me that it would be well to recheck all these accounts from first to last and pass this summary on to you to reassure you of the truth of all you were taught.
These are the facts concerning the birth of Jesus Christ. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph, but while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to Mary. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Congratulations, the Lord is with you. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to wonderfully bless you. Very soon now you will become pregnant and have a baby boy, and you are to name him Jesus. Mary asked the angel, But how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of God shall overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be utterly holy, the Son of God. Then Joseph, her fiancé, being a man of stern principle, decided to break the engagement but to do it quietly, as he didn't want to publicly disgrace her. As he lay awake considering this, he fell into a dream and saw an angel standing beside him. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't hesitate to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you shall name him Jesus, meaning Savior, for he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel commanded and brought Mary home to be his wife. About this time, Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the nation. Everyone was required to return to his ancestral home for this registration. And because Joseph was a member of the royal line, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, journeying there from Nazareth. He took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was obviously pregnant by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. There was no room for them in the village inn. And she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel appeared among them, and the landscape shone bright with the glory of the Lord. They were badly frightened, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you the most joyful news ever announced, and it is for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. How will you recognize him? You will find a baby wrapped in a blanket lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth for all those pleasing him. When this great army of angels had returned again to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story expressed astonishment. Then the shepherds went back again to their fields and flocks, praising God for the visit of the angels. And because they had seen the child, just as the angel had told them. All this will be because the mercy of our God is very tender, and heaven's dawn is about to break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness, and to guide us to the path of peace. Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, we have been saying that phrase every weekend during Advent around here, but this is going to be like the last time we get to say it for like a whole nother year, okay? So on the count of three, even through the screen, my friends, I want you to kind of get yourself up for let's say this out loud, okay? One last time 
together on the count of three. Merry Christmas. Ready? One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, we are um, so glad that you are joining us for Christmas Eve. So glad. And uh, I'm not sure about everything that had to happen just for you to get here. Okay. Uh, it, it, uh, for some of us, it could have been super simple. You know, you just hopped in the car and you came to church like, like you do on, on most Sundays. Um, but I'm guessing for, uh, others of us, maybe, maybe a lot of us, it wasn't that simple and there was kind of a lot that had to happen, um, or a lot that maybe the, you even had to kind of get over for you just to be here. Um, so this is something again that we say every single weekend and and it's important that you hear it uh this weekend. No matter who you are, okay? Or where you've been. No matter how long it's been since you've been to church, if ever. Um no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, maybe you're walking in with a little bit of baggage or a little bit of insecurity or a little bit of discomfort, okay, whatever, all right? No matter of any of that, you, you, are, you are right where you ought to be. You're right where you ought to be. Um, you're right where you need to be. And I'm saying that confidently because God is real and he's in charge and he's got you and he loves you. And, uh, and he's the reason you're here. Okay. So, uh, relax, (sighs) take a deep breath. If you need to, um, if you have kids with you, don't worry about them making noise or doing like just kids are kids. We know that, uh, don't worry about what you're wearing. If you're doing it right or any of that. Um, only thing that you need to do for the next few minutes is just, just stay open because God might have something for you and uh, you, you will want to be ready. All right. Hey, as we uh, get going here in this part of our, of our service, uh, I want to open up just with a question. It's a very simple question. It might feel like a very obvious question, but here's the question. Why are you here? Why would you say that you are here? <laughs> Some of you are going, I've been asking that for about 15 minutes now. All right. Um, I'm not asking that question in like the biggest, most philosophical, God, why am I here on this earth kind of sense. I'm just, I'm just asking kind of more practically. Why, why are you here? Why are you attending this service? Um, you know, it could be for a lot of reasons. Could be because you want to be. You know, you, maybe this is like, like me. This is like one of your favorites of, of the whole year, and and you were looking forward to it. Could be, could be for that reason. Could be. Uh, because mom or grandma told you that this is what you were doing. And all of us want those lovely people in our lives to be happy. And so that's why you are here. Um, could be, and I think this is probably true for a lot of us too, could be just, this is just what people do on Christmas Eve. <laughs> you know, Christmas Eve, you go to church. Um, so any of those might be true for you. All of those might be true for you. But there is uh, one reason that's true for all of us. No matter uh, what our individual reasons are, there's one reason that all of us are here for a Christmas Eve service. And that reason is this. Something happened. Okay? Something happened. Uh, Each of us might be here for a host of different reasons, but there's one reason that's true for all of us. Something happened. And it didn't just happen to us today. Uh, In fact, it didn't happen to any of us, but it did happen. Uh, It it really did. And and, and because it happened, all of us are here at a Christmas Eve service here today. So I want to tell you about um, what happened. All right. And uh, here's what happened. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Now with this in mind, 
since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. So that's from the Gospel of Luke, okay? Um, that's how Luke kind of opens up his, his account of what happened for his friend Theophilus. Now, Luke was a doctor, and, uh, and he was a doctor who wound up traveling with a guy named Paul, who was a missionary and church planter. And Luke and Paul travel much of the known world. Um, and, they, and they did that around 2,000 years ago. But Luke, in a lot of ways, is, is not all that different than, than you and me. He, he wasn't around for the thing that happened. He, he didn't see it. He wasn't around. He wasn't in the area. But he heard about it. And, uh, and we don't know exactly how it all worked for him, but he came to believe, Luke came to believe something that literally and eternally uh, changed the course of his life. And so he ends up joining Paul on his travels. And as he did, Luke got to know some of the people who were there for what happened. Like eyewitnesses, he talked to them. Uh, they were there. They were eyewitnesses. And, so, and Luke's a doctor, so he's used to taking notes, copious notes. Probably couldn't read his handwriting, but, but he was used to writing stuff down, right? Um, something happened. People witnessed it. And then they told their friends. And, and the news traveled. And Luke heard about it. And then he wrote about it. Um, and that thing that happened, that thing, that, that thing that happened is why you and I are here at this service. Um, before we're here because it's just tradition um, or because that's just what people do on Christmas Eve, you know, but before we're here because maybe someone invited you, before any of those reasons, you and me, we, we all of us are here because something actually happened, like something actually happened. We're doing Christmas Eve services because something happened in the real world that real people really saw and testified to. And then those people testified, they shared that with others. And then a bunch of people wrote down what they saw and heard, including, including Luke. Okay, so, so, so here's, what, here's what Luke says happened. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree um, that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Okay, so, so Syria was in the Roman province. Um, Syria was a Roman province in which this region of Judea existed. And Judea, of course, is modern day Israel. And uh, so that, that detail of like, hey, this was this happened in Syria. That's a relevant detail for both Luke and the guy he was writing to. It's kind of like saying, um, hey, back when George W. was president or back in like Obama's first term, like you and I would know when and where that was. Okay, so that's, that's, that's going on. Verse three, we get to verse three. Um, and everyone went to their own town uh, to to register, okay? So so we're used to the census idea we get. You know, that happens for us every like 10 years, right? Um, but we're used to people traveling to us in order for us to take that census. You know, or we get a piece of mail in our mailbox or we get a little email and we can go online and we can, you know, fill that out or whatever. But Quirinius declared that uh, that everybody in Judea had to go back to their hometown in order to register for that census. They weren't going to travel to you. You were going to travel to to them. And census registration wasn't just so that you could be counted. Um, it was so that you could be taxed. All right? So if you had to live through that, you'd remember the traveling, you'd remember the inconvenience, and you would remember the tax bill at the end of all of that. You would remember that particular year. Uh, verse 3, let's get to, to verse 4 here. So... Uh, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, uh, to Judea and to Bethlehem, the town of David, 
because he belonged to the house and line of David. And uh, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him, was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And that would have been the case like everywhere during that time, right? I mean, think about this just for a second. Think about like if it if you still lived in the town that you grew up in, um, and then think about all the people that you grew up with, and most of whom who have moved away, probably to some other kind of maybe, maybe bigger city. But then imagine that they all had to come back to your hometown. <laughs> and so all the hotels, because there's not a lot of them, all the hotels be all booked up. You know, every room that you could actually pay for, Airbnb, or VRBO, whatever it was, all of them will be booked. Um, people will be sleeping on the floors of their family members if they were still there. And probably most wouldn't have had a place to, to sleep at all. Um, and then we get to verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at, at night. Um, so again, just imagine, like maybe your friend uh, had moved away to Nazareth or they had moved away to Jerusalem or they had moved away to Damascus, but they're all back. And uh, all of you would remember growing up in your hometown of Bethlehem, small little town. And, uh, and of course, in that town, the only game in town there, the only career, only way to kind of make money and make, make a living primarily was ag. Uh, you raised crops or you raised sheep and goats. You'd have memories as a kid of helping out on the family farm, um, doing chores and then, of course, as you grew up and got older, you were trusted with the task of making sure nothing wild and dangerous um, had a snack at night. And so you'd be out um, at night watching over those, those sheep. And most nights were pretty boring, uh, pretty, pretty quiet. But uh, Luke's about to, to share that uh, this particular night and what happened, uh, it wasn't very quiet. Here's what happened. Verse nine. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. Okay. So Quirinius in accordance with Roman policy, demanded that a census be taken. And he demanded that happen in Judea. So that, that happened. Um, everyone in Judea had to travel back to their, to their hometown in order to register, in order to be counted and taxed. That happened. Among those travelers was a young Jewish couple engaged to be married uh, named Joseph and Mary. And Mary gave birth pretty close to when they arrived back in Joe's hometown, that happened. And none of those things are very hard to believe, right? You know, you and I weren't there to witness all of that, but, you know, lots of people did. That was a story for lots of people that year. Um, all of that is just plain world history. And a part of that history, even to this day, are shepherds, right? Um, dads and sons doing what they kind of do every single night. Um, used to gazing up at the night sky, hours on end, probably. So these shepherds, who have no reason to lie, like none, you know, they swore up and down that something happened. Like something happened. And what they said was that the sky opened, and at first it was just one messenger who appeared, but eventually it was like a whole army. And their message was crystal clear. There is a baby who has just been born in town. 
And uh, he's the Messiah. Like he's the one God sent to save the whole world from their sins. <laughs> so leave your sheep and go and go find him. And you'll know you find him because he'll be the only baby that's all wrapped up, but he's in a feeding trough. And so they did. And it was just as they were told. You and I, we are here at a Christmas Eve service. Not because this is just what churches do at this time of year. The church didn't invent Christmas. Christmas invented the church. We are here because the God of the universe loves us so much that he tore open the sky so that people might know that he came. We're here because God sent his son, born to Mary in the region of Syria, right around the time Caesar put Quirinius in charge in the real world, our world. Why are you here? You're here because something happened. Jesus happened. That's why you're here, whether you believe it or not. Whether that was your reason for coming or not. You're here because Jesus really happened. He was born and he lived. And he did incredible things. And then he died on a cross. And then he was raised to life. He is why we're having this service. <laughs> you and I, we are responding to something that God did. We're responding to the God of heaven who came to earth. Angels told the shepherds and those shepherds told some other people and those people told other people and those people told Luke and Luke talked to all of them. And today, today, Luke told you and me. And Theophilus, but he's known for a while now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... So what, right? So what? So that happened. Jesus happened. So what? We are so used to being bombarded with headlines and news and world-changing messages, you know, every single day. And did you see that? And can you believe that? And, you know... Is that even true? And is that fake? Is that real? You know, is that biased? But we're just bombarded with message, okay? But here, here, here's what I know. Even in the height of the information age, even as 2023 closes with, with all of the technology and all of the messaging and everything, right? Here's what I know. You follow who you believe in. That is still true. If you believe him, you'll follow him, Okay. Every single one of us follows who we believe in. We've chosen a news source that we believe, and we follow that news source. Good, bad, or indifferent, right? We tune in, we subscribe, we follow along. Um, at work, okay, I'm sure this is probably the case. You've got people there that you feel like are trustworthy, and you've got people that you don't feel like are trustworthy, <laughs> Um, and so you stay close to the people that are, and you kind of stay away from the people who are not as best as you can. But, but if there's someone that you trust in their character, you're going to trust their perspective and you're going to respond to their emails and you're going to kind of follow along whatever they say. And you're going to do whatever they ask. Um, some of us have, have, have trusted pastors or authors or speakers or writers that we trust. And, and then we follow along with what they've preached or what they've written or what they said, you know? Even, even on social media, the dumpster fire that is social media, right? 
you might follow a bunch of different people for a bunch of different reasons. Maybe they're a train wreck. Uh, maybe they're entertaining. Uh, maybe they're related to you and all of those things, you know, <laughs> right? But, but even there, even on social media, we have sources that we trust. And, we, and then if we trust them, we'll follow along what they're saying, what their insight is. We follow who we believe in. Or if we say that just a little bit differently, if you believe, then you will follow. That is true. We see it in the Christmas story. The shepherds believed what the angels said that night. So what'd they do? They, they, they followed the instructions they were given and they went on the look for that on the lookout for that baby and they found him. The shepherds believed, so they followed. Uh, Luke believed what Paul said about not just that baby, but how that baby grew up to be Jesus and how he lived up to what those angels announced at his birth. Luke believed, so he followed. The, um, the question for us, the rest of us, at Christmas time, the question is this. Do you believe that what Luke wrote about, what he testified to, do you believe that it's true? Really? Because if you do, if the answer to that question is, yeah, I do, then just like the shepherds and Luke and me and a host of other people, generations since, all the way up to now, then you'll follow too. Um, in a moment, we're, we're just going to create some space and some different ways for you to kind of consider what that means. So um, let me pray uh, to that end and then just one last time say this to you, okay? Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thanks for not staying in heaven. Thanks for breaking into our world and our real lives. Jesus, thank you for happening. You know exactly God, where our hearts and minds are, and you know exactly what our next step ought to be. So God, in these next moments, help us just to stay open and do exactly, God, what you need to do so that we might respond. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Jesse. If you believe, you will follow. So what does it look like to follow Jesus? It, it starts with a decision that we call the faith line. And the faith line um, exists because you, me, and everyone else, um, we've all messed up, right? We've all done stuff we shouldn't have done. Uh, we've all turned our backs on God. And uh, justice requires that there be payment for that. To have a right standing with God, that needs to be paid for. That penalty, that price of sin needs to be paid. But there's also a truth that there's nothing you or I can do to just be good enough to earn our way back into relationship, into right standing with God. There's nothing we could do. But God loves us so much that he didn't just leave us on our own island, uh, say, you know what, good luck, you're on your own. And at Christmas time, we get to celebrate the truth that uh, he came and he pursued us. That Jesus put on flesh. He was born of a virgin. He did what we never could. He lived a life free of sin. He never sinned. He was tempted in every way, but he never gave in. And he willingly and undeservingly went to the cross. And on the cross, he was able to say, it is finished because he paid the weight of your sin and mine. And that faith line decision that we uh, get to make 
is twofold. It's confess and believe. It's first to confess, to confess that we've messed up, that that has broken our relationship with God, that we are in need of a savior. And to believe that Jesus is that savior, that all of that is true, that the Christmas story is true, that he came in the flesh, that he did what we never could, that he paid the price that we never could. To believe and to trust in him as our Lord and our savior and to turn from our old sinful ways. We call it to confess and to believe. So maybe this Christmas, um, you're ready to uh, make that decision to go from death to life, to move from um, being stuck in your old ways to living um, in freedom, life with Jesus, and to ultimately spend life in eternity with Him in heaven, and where pain or sorrow, but only joy and treasure. If you're ready uh, to take that step here today, um, I'd encourage you to uh, just pray this prayer with me here right now. <laughs> God, uh, we're just grateful that uh, at this time of the year, this season, we just get this baked in reminder of your pursuit of us. That while none of us deserved it, while none of us could devise our own ways or be good enough, Jesus came born of a virgin. He lived the life that we never could. He died for um, our sin. So God, maybe for the very first time, I do, I confess and acknowledge my sin and my need for a savior. And I do, um, I do believe God that on the cross, um, Jesus paid the price of that sin. So God, today is the day that I uh, commit that decision to you. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, hey, if you uh, made that decision, uh, seriously, congratulations. Uh, there's no other decision that compares to it. It is the best decision that you could ever make in all of life. Um, and um, you might have questions about what's next uh, or what that even looks like to now live um, in new life on this side of the faith line. Um, we uh, made this resource um, to answer just those questions. It has some um, daily devotionals in here to answer questions that you're probably asking. Um, so I wanna get one of these to you. Um, and I also just wanna be a resource to answer questions, to meet you. Um, so uh, I wanna get this in the mail uh, this week. Uh, if you text FAITHLINE to 99581, uh, again, that's FAITHLINE to 99581. Uh, we just need your address and your name and I'll get one of these sent to you here this week. But maybe you're not ready uh, to make that decision yet. Just encourage you to continue to sit in this moment. Uh, we're gonna have a song here um, in just a second. Just continue to reflect on the truth from Jesse's message, um, the truth um, of the faith line, um, of God's pursuit of us, the redemption offered through Jesus' sacrifice for you. So let's sing, reflect here in this moment together.
just one last time here, I want to say thank you for being here with us today. Um, and if you did make that decision to step up the faith line, but you haven't let us know, um, or maybe um, you're on the fence or you have questions, um, I'd love to just offer myself as a connection or a resource um, to you. Um, so if you text Faithline to 99581, I'll be on the other end. I'd love to set up a time to connect. Um, if you do have any questions or if you're like, hey, uh, Cody, I don't want to talk to you, but I do want to read uh, that Faithline book that you talked about. That's totally fine too. I'd love to get one sent to you. Um, so if you just want to read more, if you want to learn more, if you want to ask questions, um, don't leave here today before you text in uh, Faithline to 99581. But uh, service isn't quite over. Uh, kids, you are going to be up next. Uh, so children's ministry is about ready to begin. Everyone else, uh, we're gonna have an exciting weekend next weekend here online where all of our campuses, our physical campuses, are gonna be joining us here online uh, for one unified service. So hope to see you back next week.
Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab and Merry Christmas. We're so close to the big event. Today, we're talking about how God announced Jesus' birth to some not so popular people in a super big way. Let's get hyped. Uh, hey guys, I'm Zeke. And I'm Carter. This week we're talking about Christmas, which is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Whatever we're doing to celebrate better be worth waking up. We've got a guest today. Wait, Frosty? Nope, it's actually guest two. Hmm. Mysterious. Not really. Are they calling in? I'm calling them in. Hey y'all, let's have a round of applause for Hey! What are y'all doing here? This is awesome! We never get to be on the show together. Too much brain power in one place. I just thought we all should celebrate together. Great idea! With our gift exchange. Whoa, didn't bring mine. Yeah, my gift isn't wrapped yet. Mine's still in the delivery package. Uh, that's cool. Everyone just take 10 and we'll meet right back here. In the meantime, What do we do, just hand them over? No way, this is a rap party. Rap or rap? Both. You guys got five minutes, do your thing. One and done. That's it? Oh, the bag is reusable. Save the tree. Excuse me, but there is more than one way to recycle. The funny papers. <laughs> I didn't know anyone still got a real newspaper. Yep, my great aunt Edna saves them for me every week. Carter, what's your wrap? Working on it. Wasn't really looking for potato soup in my Christmas stocking. Show us how you're wrapping this perfect. I like to wrap with style. And there. What just happened? That is actual gift origami. How's that potato salad coming, Carter? Done. Oh, wow, potato stamps? That's actually really cool. Ready to exchange gifts? Let's do it. Unwrap party! Here goes! Yeah. What? I want to save this really amazing wrapping paper. Oh, way cool. Yes. Awesome sauce. I love it. <laughs> Did we get each other the same thing? Uh, well, it is the season. It's getting chilly out there tonight. Speaking of chilly nights, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. God had a plan to bless the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But God's people kept turning away. At last, they were attacked by foreign nations. Even in this time of trouble, God spoke through prophets and promised to send a rescuer. Then, after hundreds of years, God sent an angel to an ordinary girl named Mary. Mary gave birth to God's son, Jesus, just as God had promised. Then an angel choir announced the news about Jesus to a group of humble shepherds. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian, and Christmas is a time when we remember how God's love is for everyone. On the night Jesus was born, there was a group of shepherds living out in the fields, watching over their sheep. <laughs> okay, guys. Why was the grumpy sheep grumpy? Um, why? Because he, he had a bad day. 
Now, shepherds played an important role in Israel at that time, but despite the shepherds' hard work, a lot of people just looked down on them. People thought they weren't very important. However, as these shepherds were going about their night, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared before them. Do not be afraid. Great grazing sheep herds! Sweet baby lambskins. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy to all people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I speak the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in the manger. Suddenly, a huge group of angels appeared in the sky singing praises to God. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. When the angels left, the shepherds ran off in excitement to find the baby the angels had told them about. Look for a manger. There's a bunch of mangers. Well, then we'll check them all. At last, the shepherds found baby Jesus lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. Whoa, baby. You got that right. Well, let's tell everyone. We're spreading the news. The shepherds ran off and told everybody they saw the good news about Jesus. All who heard them were amazed. And eventually, the shepherds returned to their fields, praising God the whole way. Though people thought that shepherds were unimportant, God chose a group of shepherds to receive the most important news in history. So the message was clear. God's love is for everyone. The end. Wow. It's so cool how God made the shepherds part of the story even when everyone else was making fun of them. Oh, absolutely. So what's our part in the story? God gave us the most amazing gift ever by sending Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he showed us perfectly what it means to love God and love others. And then he gave us his life in our place. When we choose to accept God's incredible gift and follow Jesus, we will get to live forever with God. It is literally the best gift ever. And it's for everyone. That's right. Every single person is created in God's image. We were made for relationship with God. You can share God's love with everybody you meet. Starting with your family. Yeah, and your grouchy neighbor. The crossing guard. The teachers at school. People who look different. Act different. Or think different. <laughs> That's exactly right. Merry Christmas! <laughs> and see you next time. So, here's the thing. God's love is for everyone. And God gave us the most amazing gift ever in sending Jesus. Speaking of gifts, this is pretty great. And all of you are pretty great too. From all of us at StoryLab, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Thanks for joining us. See you next time.